bit of, um, well, I really relate to the title, and that's, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. Zach of London. <laughs> Kiln by Derek Brand. Yeah, Derek. Darwin's Dinner, Devin Kelly Sneed. Gods Must Be Hungry, Asa Siddiqui. <laughs> Holy cow. You only have two weeks, get to work. Okay, bye. Yeah, I mean, for, for AF, uh, I mean, I wasn't sure I was gonna do it at all because I'm leading Psychonauts 2, and so I'm pretty busy, and the idea of like just doing rank and file work on somebody else's team for two weeks seemed pretty awesome. It's like really exciting, such a unique opportunity. Never had a chance to lead a team before. Pretty nervous. And yeah, just it's been three years, so it's not a huge unknown. It's still scary, but uh, still. It was, I knew I knew I had done it before, so it's like, I could do it again. Why is anyone letting me do this? Uh, I don't know, I don't know what to do. Uh. We've selected our games that we're making, and the project leaders of those games are gonna come up here and tell the team at Double Fine about what those games are in more detail, because they're gonna leave this room and they're gonna go indicate which game they would most like to work on, and then we'll start the process of assigning the teams and breaking up to four groups. One player is in VR, and they're thrown into a variety of strange and disorienting situations where they have no idea what they're supposed to do or, in fact, like who they actually are. And these are like tiny little micro-game interactions. You may need to punch something or find something or pick up an object or shoot a thing, um, but you really have no idea. And then the people outside your v out of VR, all the rest of your friends, uh, are given clues that help give them some of the information about what you need to do, but they also need you to describe kind of what you're seeing and where you are, and I'm in a forest, and I think I might be a bear or whatever. Um, and then you have to kind of yell back and forth to try to figure out what to do in a very short amount of time. Um, it's basically just a minigame collection at the end of the day, uh, a VR minigame collection. Um, and then, uh, but within that, there's just a lot of open-endedness for each one of those interactions. And then there's just other like logistical stuff of like we're developing for VR, it takes a lot of like startup time, it's hard to test stuff at your desk. It's a social multiplayer game, so we need lots of players to play test, everybody's busy. So the design pillar for the prototype is evolution through artificial selection. Explore the island to hunt a variety of species. After each foraging cycle, time advances to the next year and the animal populations reproduce. Eat all the slow bunnies this year? You may starve next year when the new bunnies are too quick to catch. I mean, I'm not sure it's gonna work at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't, like, I'm not confident the game's gonna work. Um, I hope it's gonna work. I, I think we can make it work, but like, it could all go wrong, uh, and that's fine. I don't think it would be as interesting of a concept to prototype if we knew it was going to work. This is a third-person game, uh, multiplayer, team-based brawler. And uh, you have two teams, and you play as these little useless spirits. And uh, this is a magic pottery wheel that uh, your little spirit can use to, to craft a body for himself that he can go and try to beat up the other, other side. Because I didn't even know what a project lead was when I, was, when I signed up for it last time. Uh, also, just the nature of this project. I was a little more confident that I knew more of what it was and, and how to, not necessarily how to execute it, because I'm not as technical as some of the other people here, but I at least knew more what, what the game was, you know, like what the moment to moment thing that you were doing was. You just punch each other, <laughs> like reduce it down to the dumbest thing possible, <laughs> uh, but still be fun, you know. And uh, there will be a full game loop. I, I feel like we can do that for sure. Uh, and hopefully it'll be better than that. And you try and gather as many uh, ingredients as you can. And the whole time you're doing this, there is a god moving through the town. And you're trying to get all of your stuff together and get to the arena before he does. And you're going to be small within that. And you will be running around and guiding the ingredients through these ridiculous cooking contraptions uh, in order to get them ready for plating. I'll be honest, I don't really know uh, exactly what I need just because... <laughs> I have not done this uh, before, ever, uh, but this is sort of what I'm turning in, and uh, yeah, you can sort of get a sense here of, of what I'm looking for from each, each, uh, each discipline here. But just by having observed game development for the past eight, however long it's been, yeah. number of years, that you have a slightly better expectation of how things happen and how it will come together. Yeah, I mean, you would think so, right? And it's just like, I can watch every episode of CSI and I have no idea how to like solve an cr actual crime. So I think 
what's going to happen in the next two weeks is going to be the real learning experience. Come here. This way, Asif. Yeah, this side. This side. See that? Look at that. Right there? Look at that. See that? Please, Summer, your first team member. Uh, in the most Brian. dramatic way possible. That wasn't very dramatic. Yeah, Brian. Zach. Eric. Eric. Red Rover, Red Rover. Be ever in your favor. my ballpoint pen at my desk, so I have to use my fancy pens. Yeah, it's fine, it's I, I Wait, is that meant on. for pencils or for dentist equipment? That's eyes. Duh. Oh, that'll be disgusting. That's why I draw a person for skip. Even for day one, I just, uh, I felt like I had maybe five different things that I needed to do and time enough to do two of them, to, to do them well. Um, it wasn't like a lot of busy work, it was a lot of like giving people direction on stuff, um, which is new to me, like dealing with this many people across this many disciplines. Make sure that we have turned the cooking process into something physical, so not abstracting it with a mini game, but physically carrying stuff around uh, manipulating them in the pan, running them through like giant blades if you need to chop them, uh, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I will get to the uh, machine specifics later on. Is it a set, set layout? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be a set layout. Yeah, just for this prototype. Mm -hmm. uh, like that is not ever going to be randomized. Okay. Um, but potentially for this last station, that would potentially be like rise from the ground or something. Yeah, or, it like, totally could. Yeah, or there could just be, like, be unveiled at the end. Mm -hmm. okay. A lot of stuff is a little bit alien to me, especially like where 3D lighting is concerned, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, but I mean, everyone here is amazing, and they know that like I need help, so like they're taking a lot of ownership over their respective roles, um, and that's helping a lot too. So we can end up having like screens and modern technology, but as long as there's like the old stuff mm -hmm. there as well. Yeah, I really like that I a lot. That'll be good. Just having like a clay oven or something Yeah, would be pretty rad. I always like just doing three levels of art style, so we have three <laughs> times as much yes. stuff yeah. to think out, well, which is great to do yeah. in two weeks. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> First meeting. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, these guys all know what they're doing, and uh, I actually had answers to their questions. I think, which was weird, you know, and not what I was expecting. So I think it's it's off to a super solid start. And I mean, you guys are, I think, by this episode already will have announced the or revealed the the special guest, right? So, it's AF again. Yeah. You're here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm um, helping out with whatever. Are you going to work on which projects are you going to work on all of them? <clears throat> whatever anyone, anyone wants me to do. Yeah, I'd like to do some 2D animation if anyone wants some of that, or CG modeling. I was kind of hoping to do some like background rocks and kiln. I think that would be cool. And I've been doing concept for uh, Gods must be hungry. Hey man, you want to pick Hi, a yes. you want to pick a face? I would love to pick a face. <laughs> I'll pick your brain and pick a face. This one has a mask. <laughs> it's got a lot of oh accessories. God. I know you want this one. Yeah. So do you want to just do this one? Uh, let me see the other one again. I mean, we knew there was there was this possibility that Penn might be joining. We had heard about that early. Um, but uh, what I didn't know was that he was only going to be here for a small amount of time, so each team was probably just going to get him for a day. I was immediately just like, okay, I know like this is the one thing that like if 
there was anything he could touch on this, it would be like what the god looks like. This one's uglier. It is uglier. Okay, so I like the uh, the big eyes on the other one a lot. Yeah. I think that's really rad looking. And then uh, on the other guy, uh, the forest and the flames is just, that's amazing. So I like the little pink Best Bud Chef that you had yeah. snuck in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, this is this is amazing. Uh, cool. Yeah, I like watching you be filmed and talk while you're being filmed. Yeah, yeah. I figured uh, this would make you feel a little bit better about what happened to you last time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take All the right. bullet for you. Thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff was building a world. Silvio set up the basic project, which uh, kind of dropped a default character in. Gabe spent some time working on tuning the camera, so we got kind of the camera angle that we're looking for. And then we've just had a whole bunch of meetings to kind of plan out things that we want to do. So a loud creature you would maybe be able to find more easily? I'm just, me I'm just saying that you might, okay. you might want to really kill them, but if you kill them, then you know, that, that, those traits <laughs> go away. And it's like this really annoying creature. So it's just that it's annoying. <laughs> okay. It's just the annoying rabbit. We'll just get the goat screaming noise. Yeah, like goat. <laughs> You'd always said that you wanted a lot of programmers on this project, and I could see how this could gain like um, exponential complexity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the, the more things you add into the simulation, the more, more complex it gets. Part of wanting the more programmers is kind of people that are good at thinking through systems. Um, and even if they're not writing code, understanding those systems and being able to design them and tune them is, is kind of a skill set that uh, I think is really valuable in this project. Uh, we're Silvio still wrestling with like getting the light maps to build. So yeah, he's having problems is, with Incredible build on the build machine too. This is what our environment looks like right I, now. I, yeah, I walked by like <laughs> ten minutes ago, and it was great because like on this screen you had this, and on the other screen there was like search results like why is my landscape black? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What side of the artistic spectrum do you want to be on? Like more realistic or more stylized? I think more stylized. Yeah. But like not, not too much of a cartoon. Okay. Um, uh, but like, like if you if you think that realistic, like things like this, look simple but yeah. are deceptively difficult to make in yeah. 3D. Yeah. And so. I'm much more concerned about us being able to make the stuff because we only have two weeks. Yeah. So, taking these shapes and like just smoothing it out a little bit, it's totally. I think that's uh -huh. that's a good way to go. Yeah. But like actually making them like Lego pieces yeah. seems impossible. Okay. Then I then I would like if that seems impossible, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have room for like multiple impossible tasks on one project. Uh, yeah. I was way more overwhelmed yesterday than I am today. Um, but like Andy's been helping a ton, keeping keeping things on track, um, which is really really awesome. <laughs> the the key things we want to come up with as fast as possible are to get the player character, what his basic move set is, and one enemy mm -hmm. just moving around a space. Sure. But it's 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 a bit of a weird feeling to kind of. Uh, come up with this idea and provide direction and suddenly have an entire team of people moving in that direction. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a new experience for me. You get the stain on my shirt? I got a big beat stain. I got a beat to follow on my shirt. I get that in the shot, it's really good. It's, it's like beat on beat. So beat on good. beat, yeah, no, it's, it works all right. It's not so bad, it'll come out. It's beat season, it's great. My high level goals were to like, get the basic game flow propped up of like starting a game, running through some mini games, and that we don't have made any mini games, but you can run through them, you can succeed or fail. We get some hands in so you can pick up objects, manipulate objects. Uh, we had a really great brainstorm, generated lots and lots of ideas, so I have to go through that and figure out what the things we're gonna build as sort of pilot content. You're a vampire and you're trying to do your makeup, but you can't see your face, so how do you vampires do their makeup? Ooh. <laughs> that's a good one. Actually, that's uh, great. What if, what if, like, yeah, what if you had to paint your face and uh, people were telling you a little over to the left oh, yeah. and the people on the outside could see what you're doing? And also, Pendleton Ward showed up and, and came to our brainstorm and did some little doodles and stuff, and um, that was a pleasant surprise. You're going to see an old lady in a chair, and you're a ghost. You might have, be able to have enough time to recognize that you're transparent, and then you're just going to go like this. <laughs> and then you're going to scare the person. Right? 30 seconds? Yeah. 30 seconds can last longer than... All right, so wait, then, then Anna had one. Uh, 
And then we actually do have to be done because I don't want to yeah. do this forever. What I'd like to do is like, all right, let's get the one more first. No, 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 it's fine. Do it. What is it? No, no, what is no, it? no, it's not It could be the best idea. Uh, no. It could be the. You did get a lot of ideas out of that brainstorming meeting, like a ton of ideas. So yeah. is that an intimidating amount of ideas to have to cut no. back? From here, if we run into like little technical hurdles of like, hey, we want to make a sausage that you can chop up, but we don't can't figure out how to do that kind of floppy physics body and cut the thing and cap it off or whatever, and it's too hard, we just walk away from it. Because we've got like a million ideas, so we don't need to, to go down a lot of those rabbit holes. We haven't run into any big technical hurdles. I mean, it, considering we're running in VR and like we're not set up as a studio for doing wide scale VR development, um, actually getting everybody set up with uh, with kits and either a Vive or an Oculus at their station um, was relatively streamless. Table. Oh, this is the default default Unreal little room. Uh huh. So far, no. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a programmer working on. I have no idea what I'm doing, which is a really accurate description at the moment. So yeah, one core feature for our game is that we we need to have interaction between the person who's in VR and the people who are outside. So I'm currently digging through and trying to figure out what is the simplest, quickest way I can get that working. So here I've got two windows going. Um, but moving the VR headset moves the camera in both windows, which shouldn't be happening. And I'm not sure how easy it is going to be to see this on film, but there's some uh, weird drawing artifacts. Being day one, it's not, not too bad. But I'm hoping to get, soon, get this taken care of sooner rather than later, because everything depends on it pretty heavily. Um, and so if this, this wasn't working, uh, it would be pretty tricky for us. So if I can get both these things fixed, hopefully in the next day or two, um, then we'll be able to have a gameplay that depends on this kind of stuff. Emily and our team worked on kind of an initial art direction. You actually see it, if you see it on my screen, this sort of like very, very uh, bold, flat colors, not a lot of detail, texture, and material work, um, kind of going for a like, you know, rubberized plastic sort of look, like plasticine clay, um, which should look like very iconic, very bold shapes, very easy to see, um, also very easy to make. So but I think tomorrow, just getting the hands in, manipulatable objects, getting our pilot assets, and then getting that first game, mini game kicked off, uh, we'd be in a really good place. What's up? That guy? Oh, uh, I don't know. Someone left that on my chair uh, at some point. So I drew a, a little guy on it. Yeah, he just keeps me company. He's going to shrivel into a really gross like beast eventually, I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> but we have some tech that we're not sure if it's going to work or not. Um, so it was good to get that started like right away. That was the first meeting uh, I set was the clay, clay throwing tech, because uh, I knew Matt had some ideas, and uh, I wanted to get my ideas out, and so we talked about how we can make the most interesting <clears throat> pot, you know, throwing in the time that we have. Because uh, we could have done it the super easy way. That would have been fine, it, but it, it wouldn't have been as interesting, maybe. This has to happen uh, really quickly, uh, so like less than 30 seconds, 30 seconds or less. So we wanted to try to like, at least push it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, one thing you mentioned was like, you kind of had this idea of this infinitely growing clay, but to me that works against what I think of as clay as you're conserving volume, right? You know, like once you just I just it. I just feel like it gets too complicated when when you worry about all that stuff in 30 seconds or less. Players, like silhouette is like an instant read for everyone, so for easily understanding like gameplay stuff, people can read a silhouette, um, but trying to communicate like in internal thickness uh, I think adds a lot of additional telegraphing you'd have to do, and you have to think about all these other things on how. Well, to I guess I'm saying that. during during the combat you wouldn't need to see the thickness, but you would know that guy wasted all his clay making this thing really big. I bet it's thin in some places because I know he only has so much clay to work with. It's an axis of like design that is just further complicates an already complicated setup that we're gonna have. Like it does, I don't think thickness adds as much as it's going to take away. Uh, not that I have everything figured out at all, but because it's going to change a lot, and we're going to have to iterate it, iterate on it. But um, it was at least a good. I actually had a way to like uh, get everyone started on stuff. So yeah, sorry, it's hard to hear. <laughs> it's hard to think. Yeah. There's so much noise. Yeah. Like this nice quiet pod. I know, it's so quiet. You guys are in a meeting this morning briefly? Yeah. It's very quiet. Yeah. It's a nice quiet team. <laughs> yeah, it is quiet team. I like it. <laughs> it's, it's, good. A good, it's a good quiet team. <laughs> From the pitch, it sort of seemed like you were more interested in them 
physically having to handle how they're, it's like the weight and gravity on them? Yeah, I, I, like I've been waiting to see where the animation stuff kind of goes, because like Jared and Zach are, are like researching that and seeing what we can do with Unreal and if we're gonna need programmer help with that and at what like programmers are, are also working on a lot of other stuff, so it's like mm. how much resources are available to make that as satisfying as possible. Uh, and so we're, it's, that's another one of those research things which uh, besides the clay tech is also like the movement animation stuff. I wanna see what shakes out mm. over the next couple of days and then see what's, what's possible mm. with the time that we have. So. Can you look to your right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got all this, all these floppy limbs going on. Um, but right now we're just seeing how far we can push the physical animation aspect and hopefully rely less on creating a ton of pre-authored animations. Um, but depends on how, where we want to take combat and everything else. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, they're distracting me. <laughs> <laughs> These are, oh my god, they're meeting. Are you guys aren't going to get a beer, are you? Because I. Uh... <laughs> awesome. <All> right, sorry. <laughs>